the good shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your right hand, O Lord, we pray, encompass your family with perpetual help, so that defended from all wickedness by the resurrection of your only begotten Son, we may make our way by means of your heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There was an attempt in Iconium by both the Gentiles and the Jews, together with their leaders, to attack and stone Paul and Barnabas. They realized it and fled to the Lyconian uh, cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding countryside where they continued to proclaim the good news. At Lystra there was a crippled man, lame from birth, who had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, who looked intently at him, saw that he had the faith to be healed, and called out in a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. He jumped up and began to walk about. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they cried out in uh, Lyconian, the gods have come down to us in human form. They called Paul Barnabas Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, for he together with the people intended to offer sacrifice. The apostles Barnabas and Paul tore their garments when they heard this and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Men, why are you doing this? We are of the same nature as you, human beings. We proclaim to you good news that you should turn from these idols to the living God who made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all Gentiles to go on their own ways. Yet, in bestowing his goodness, he did not leave himself without witness, for he gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons and filled you with nourishment and gladness for your hearts. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory, because of your mercy, because of your truth. Why should the pagans say, where is their God? Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Our God is in heaven, whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. 
Heaven is the heaven of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Judas, not the Iscariot, said to him, Master, then what happened that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this, that while I am with you, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our Easter journey continues through the Acts of the Apostles. We heard about some great success that Paul and Barnabas had, and now we hear about um, uh, a strange series of events. First of all, uh, Paul and Barnabas having to flee for their lives because they're going to be stoned to death. They're doing these good things, and yet people are still wanting to get rid of them. They offer too great a challenge to them, too hard a change for them to receive. And they consider um, the work of Paul and Barnabas to be blasphemy, and so they have to get rid of them by stoning them. So, as has happened before in the Acts of the Apostles, people flee persecution, and it really results in the conversion of more and more people, though a little bit difficult in this circumstance. Paul and Barnabas go to Lystra, and a crippled man is healed, and people think that it is by the pagan gods, Zeus and Hermes, that this person has been healed. And even though Paul and Barnabas try to do what they can to keep them from offering sacrifices to them, it says they could scarcely restrain the crowds from offering them sacrifice. They recognize that what has happened, the people that is, recognize that what has happened is something miraculous, something from the gods, something from beyond them, but they don't recognize the right God. And so Paul and Barnabas have a tough job with now trying to convince them that it is not because of these other gods that this person was healed, but that uh, instead he is healed through the power of God, through Jesus. Uh, in the gospel today, we um, have the first inklings of the Holy Spirit coming. Now, certainly we heard about this um, in the days following uh, the uh, Easter Sunday. We uh, saw the power of the Spirit descending upon the apostles and all those who were gathered in the upper room. We heard about the Holy Spirit descending upon uh, people who were not Jewish, which helped uh, Peter to decide, help Peter to, um, to determine that the message, this good news about Jesus Christ is to be spread not just to the Jews, but to the Gentiles, to everyone. And now we're getting, as we're working up towards Pentecost in a couple of weeks, we um, are hearing about this advocate, the Holy Spirit. And what I would say is, first of all, this title, advocate, is significant for us. 
it does have sort of a legal connotation. It does mean something about a lawyer, but it, what it really means is, and something we can think about, is someone who walks next to us, who uh, defends us in court, defends us and tries to uh, bring an innocent verdict. Now, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, certainly gives us the words to say when we need to say them, if we're open to that, and we allow the Spirit to speak through us. This advocate is the one that will help us on our journey through life and to heaven. This advocate will help us in accepting the forgiveness of Jesus. We will not need to defend what we have done, those things that are wrong. We rely solely on the justice of our Lord, this true justice that will bring forgiveness through Jesus Christ. But we have this advocate, and this advocate, as the the gospel tells us, teaches us everything and reminds us of all that Jesus told us. This is a wonderful thing to have. Certainly great for the apostles as they were frequently forgetting what the Lord had done. They were not trusting in him. They needed more assistance beyond Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit is given to them and remains with us even now. And so we ask the Lord to help us to receive that abundant gift of the Spirit and ask the Lord to help us in um, making good use of that Spirit, even in the midst of opposition, even in the midst of misunderstanding. We offer our prayers to the Lord by first praying for a particular homebound that are in need of our prayers, Sam Clark, Dutch Hallingsey, and Betty King. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who spread the good news of God's salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our government at all levels that they may provide the assistance needed for those who are um, uh, helping uh, the healthcare workers, for those who are uh, working jobs that put them at risk to uh, contract the coronavirus. Uh, we pray that uh, they might receive all of the protective uh, equipment and, uh, and other things necessary to um, to bring about healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died. We pray in particular those who have died as a result of the coronavirus, that they might be received into heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God and Father of the Word made flesh, you have sent men and women in all ages to spread the good news of salvation. May your word take root in their hearts of all who hear and bear fruit in the lives of all who follow your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. <clears throat> may our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you, says the Lord. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.